the most important thing ever to happen in the world of DC on film comes in 2025 with Superman Legacy. John, you're saying that movie's more important than Christopher Nolan's Batman. I don't know. Understand what I'm saying. This is their recreation of their DC universe. The DC films have lost the audience completely. They haven't put out their last seven films. Not one has made $400 million at the box office, even one with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So they're going back to the drawing board. They're starting again, and it comes out with Superman Legacy. I don't think it has ever been more important for DC to have a movie be really good and work. Now, we've been hearing a lot of stuff over the last number of months about casting. Nathan Fillion's going to be in it as a Green Lantern. I think it's Guy Gardner he's going to be mm -hmm. in that one. We got Hawk Girl. We got Mr. Terrific. We got like a whole bunch of characters coming. But now for the first time, according to reports, We've now got one of our villains, a member of the authority, the engineer, has now been cast. This comes to us from Deadline, who writes the following. Maria Gabriela de Farrea, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, uh, yep, the Venezuelan Farrea. actress best known for roles in Fox comedies, Animal Control, and the Moody's, has landed a breakout part on the film side, joining the cast of James Gunn's Superman Legacy. Her character is Angela Spica. Again, I'm, I've only ever read the name. I've never heard it said. I hope I'm saying it right. AKA The Engineer, part of the Warner slash DC Flicks villain team. Uh, Angie's powers stem from nanotechnology built into her body. Created by Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch, she's the second DC character to bear the name The Engineer and was first introduced in The Authority, which we already know is going to play a big role in James Gunn's DC, volume number one in 1999. All right, so The Engineer a member of the authority, she has this, basically she's replaced her blood with nanobots. She has this metal exoskeleton. She has a whole bunch of powers connected to it. She is extremely powerful. Again, the second iteration of the engineer, she has been a anti-hero as a member of the authority. She's also been used in DC as a straight up villain. Uh, at one point wanting to exterminate humanity off the face of the earth to rebuild a better world. Now, the authority is kind of like the forerunner of what, what was the name of Superman's, like, uh, government in... Uh, On Krypton? No, no, uh, what's the, the video game? Um, Injustice. Injustice. So, Injustice Gods Among Us... What the, Superman calls his kind of government something. I can't remember the name of it, mm. but it was kind of the future. Like they you believe they one chat. earth regime. The regime is what they call them. The regime. So basically the authority is kind of like the philosophy of peacemaker. I love peace above all things. And I don't care how many men, women, and children I have to kill to get it. Right. That was kind of their philosophy. They believe in the ends justify the means, whatever we got to do. And that of course does not fit well with Superman's philosophy of uh, the world. So they're probably going to end up being the antagonist and the engineer may be one of the key ones, ones of them. I think it's really interesting. Here's the main reason why I think this is really interesting is that it suggests to me that they're not going to come out of the gate with Superman with one of your marquee Superman villains, right? There's only so many high profile ones that you have and they've been done many times all of them basically even brainiac remember that show that short-lived show krypton mm -hmm. there was a, actually by the way that show wasn't pretty bad good. it was pretty good but you had you know brainiac was kind of the central core villain of that and yeah. we've had a lot of lex luther and do you come out of the gate with a doomsday i like the idea that they are going to be introducing probably characters to the vast majority of the movie going audience who have probably they've never heard of or seen before and getting them introduced this way in his first film. Now, look, this is just the first of what will probably be many of these sorts of casting announcements, but I like what I'm seeing and I like this direction they're going. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Quip. Guys, you know that good health starts with good habits and Quip makes it easy by delivering all the oral care essentials that you need to care for your mouth. For example, their incredible electric toothbrush. Guys, I've been using electric toothbrushes for years and this is easily the best one I've ever owned. Time sonic vibrations with 30 second pulses to guide a dentist recommended two minute clean. A lightweight and sleek design for adults and kids with no wires or bulky charger to weigh you down. Reusable handles in a range of sleek metal hues as well as bright plastic colors sure to make a pop on your bathroom counter. Skip the battery 
batteries and snap into healthy habits with the new rechargeable electric toothbrush. All the features of the original Quip plus one magnetic charge powers up to three months of brushing. In addition to brush heads, Quip also delivers fresh floss, toothpaste, mouthwash, and gum refills every three months from just $7. So if you go to getquip.com slash campia right now, you'll get 20% off any electric toothbrush, mint and gum dispenser, or water flosser. That's your 20% off any electric toothbrush, mint and gum dispenser, water flosser at getquip.com slash campia. That's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash campia. Quip, the good habits company. Chris, what did you think about this? I love this. I don't know much about this actress, but I know quite a bit about the authority. And I love the use of the engineer. Superman, historically, one of the problems that happens, particularly in film, is that Superman is so overpowered. Yes. He has so many powers. He's so strong. The engineer is constantly <laughs> overpowered. Yeah. Um, all that nanotech stuff makes her able to shape shift, create matter. Sometimes she has telepathy. She can fly. She, uh, there's so many things that it's just, oh, and she has that power too now. Right. There it is. So one, I think that's great because you've got people who can go toe to toe against each other. I think this is also a really smart move. And when James Gunn first said he was doing the authority, went, oh, that's really interesting. Relatively new to the comic scene because in terms of the length of DC's work. Yeah, they've only been on for like the last 25 years yeah, or so. Yeah, 99 is very fresh. I think it's really interesting to have Superman Legacy feature the authority mm. because they came about too in comics at a time where the gritty anti-hero was a big thing. And what's one of the criticisms that we hear a lot of times with DC films was these gritty dark things for a while. It was this, it was that. It didn't know what it wanted to be sometimes, at least when it came to the cinematic universe. I think it's a really cool meta thing to have Superman face off against the gritty dark no pastels here, no bright colors here, heroes, <laughs> as this kind of the old DCU is dead and we're figuring out who we are and what our identity is. And that also allows you the opportunity to have Superman figure out who his identity is as well. I think that's a really cool through line with a lot of Superman stories too of you have this power, how do you protect, how do you lead and when do you step back? And a group like the authority has the authority to rule over mankind, to mm. make sure they stay in line for their good, and they'll do it at any cost. Superman has always tried to do things on behalf of people, on behalf of humanity, but with their humanity in mind, and has never seen himself as a god, even though he could be one. So I think that juxtaposition could be really, really interesting here. I wonder if it was all the authority stuff and engineer, because remember the other day Jacob Elordi mentioned that he turned down uh, uh, auditioning for Superman because it was just too dark for him. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if that might have something to do with it. Could you know, be. If, if some of this sounds familiar too, this is thematically very similar to what you got in one of the most famous graphic novel stories of all time, Kingdom Come. Yep. Where you basically had Superman and the old school heroes that were like, these new heroes are not doing it right and it causes problems and there's some really interesting thematic stuff they're going to be able to do with this so again i'm not very familiar with this actress i caught a glimpse of her in that the russo brothers did that very short-lived i think it got canceled after one season sci-fi series deadly class i know she was in that um i'm not really familiar with her work she does have a resume i mean she's she's got a lot of acting experience but i'm just not very familiar with her so it's gonna be interesting to see yeah. how this character turns out. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show Podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.